It's almost 30 degrees today, what? You might be wondering why I'm filming this video if it's so nice outside. I am just that dedicated. And also I may have got a tiny bit sunburnt yesterday so it's probably best that I stay indoors. <laughs> so this June I read three things and those things were one volume of a comic book, one non-fiction book and one fiction book. So a pretty well-rounded reading month for me. The first thing I read was Captain Marvel Volume 1 Higher, Further, Faster, More by Kelly Sue DeConnick and David Lopez. This is about Carol Danvers who's her I really really want and she goes on an adventure into space with her cat and along the way she meets lots of interesting characters including the Guardians of the Galaxy. This was a really fun read, exactly what I expected, quite funny I also liked the artwork, it's very colourful and I think it just really fits the tone of the comic. Just It kind of matches the story. You'll have to take my word for it on what I mean though. I really liked the character of Carol Danvers, she reminds me of like the traditional superhero type that's very righteous but also has a sense of humour as well. I don't know if I'll be continuing on with the series but I really enjoyed it for what it was just on its own and yeah I think I'm gonna give it a 3 out of 5 stars. The second thing that I read is completely different and that is The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat by Oliver Sacks. This is a non-fiction book and it is about people who are suffering from very rare I think neurological disorders. There is the man who mistook his wife for a hat because he can't recognise people's faces and he sees faces on inanimate objects and then there is a guy whose memory is completely gone from the year of 1945 onwards, he doesn't remember anything past that point. It's very very interesting. If you are at all interested in psychology, neurology, anything like that, I would definitely pick this up. Oliver Sacks has this really charming way of writing about people he brings into life and it isn't a clinical distant point of view on these people, it's you really get a sense of the people in these case studies so that's what I really enjoyed about this, the kind of human aspect of it. I really admired a lot of the people in these case studies because of their resilience the way that they're able to adapt their lifestyle in order to accommodate for these sometimes tragic situations, they're always able to find something good in it and they're always able to find something in life that they can connect to, that can help them experience the world and be content and happy. That to me is something that I always try to do. I always try to see the good thing in a bad situation and try to find something good that can come out of it. So I really admired that about these people in this book. Sachs also brings up the fact that there is a fine line between disorder and order. Um, there's one story where a woman is suffering from a neuro neurological disease but she asks him, look, I don't mind my disease, it's made me a little bit less anxious and I would be grateful if you could stop it from getting worse but I don't mind the level that it's at right now because it makes me feel better as a person. So it's kind of like explore that paradox between illness and wellness that is really interesting to me. So yes, highly recommend this if you are interested in that kind of thing and I would give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It's not going to be one of my favourite books which is when I give a book a 5 star but I really really enjoyed it. So 4.5. And the final thing that I read was Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. I haven't read Gone Girl and I haven't read Dark Places so this was my first Gillian Flynn book. This is about a reporter called Camille who works for the Daily Post in Chicago and her boss tells her to cover a story in her hometown of these two girls that have been murdered. This was a lot slower paced than I imagined and I felt like it really matched the setting which was summertime in Missouri. I always had this feeling of being really languid and 
everything being kind of hot and a little bit overwhelming but also you can't really do much about it because it's really hot and you just can't be bothered moving at a faster pace. That to me was the pacing of this book. <laughs> it took me a few chapters to get used to the way that Camille, the main character, was speaking. Like, it was in first person and she has a certain rhythm to her sentences that I just couldn't, couldn't get at first but once I did it was really really interesting to find out all of her backstory and I really enjoyed looking at her kind of like psychology. I'm not sure if it's because I was reading the other book before this but I was really fascinated by her character and her mindset and the way that she thinks about herself and about herself in the world. As for the mystery aspect, I did guess who the killer was but I was always second guessing myself. In the end, knowing who the killer was wasn't really where I found my satisfaction. It was more like I really enjoyed watching Camille figure things out for herself. I definitely wasn't disappointed at how messed up the characters were. They were very messed up and it's kind of like what I imagine the world would be like if everyone was their most Freudian selves or like if everybody was as dark as they were ever going to get. Oh, I feel like I have so much more to say about this book so this is possibly going to be a review soon on my channel. In the end I gave this one a 3 out of 5 stars and I enjoyed it. I forgot to mention that I do have full reviews on my blog of both The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat and Sharp Objects so if you're interested I'll leave those links in the description. Those were all the things that I read in June so now I'll move on to some of my favourites. First favourite I want to talk about is actually Place this month because I got to go to Barcelona with my two closest friends and we loved it, it was wonderful. I definitely recommend going to Barcelona, it's nothing like any city I've ever seen before. The architecture is just gorgeous and it's just so completely different, I can't explain, it's so unique and has such character, it's just beautiful. If you do get to go there I would highly recommend going down La Rambla which is kind of a main street in Barcelona and you have all of these stalls and restaurants and shops and ice cream. The ice cream guys is so good, so good. The street leads all the way down to the harbour and it's just so atmospheric and lively and really really nice. And then I would also recommend that you go to the Font Magica which is a magic fountain but I would recommend that you go up the steps towards the museum on top of the hill and look down across the city because that at, on our last night was just magical and stunning and I'm so glad that I got to go. It was an amazing time. Now moving on to TV shows. Orange is the New Black season 3 came out and I was so excited. Oh my goodness. I love Orange is the New Black and I was so, so excited for this season. I have to say that I didn't enjoy it as much as season 1 and 2 but I still love it. I loved the interactions between Boo and Doggett. Those scenes were my favourites by far. I loved them so much. I just can't believe that now I'm going to have to wait another year for season 4. That's not fair. But I do think that it started filming which is really exciting so looking forward to that next year. <laughs> The other TV show that I watched that I wanted to mention was Sense8. This is about eight people who are connected psychically all around the world. This is a new Netflix series and I've heard quite a few people talking about it. I had more mixed feelings about it than most of the people that I've seen talk about it. Not a lot of things get answered, not enough for my tastes anyway, but the characters are fantastic. So I would recommend that you check that out if you're interested because you'll probably like it. Films that I went to see, I saw Jurassic World. This was more of a really great experience rather than a really great film. I thought that the film was actually not that great but I still really enjoyed it. And I fell in love with Four Raptors which is ridiculous and I never thought that sentence would ever leave my mouth but it has. I love blue so much guys. The whole way through I kind of didn't care about any of the characters that might die. I was more invested in the raptors lives so that was interesting. 
they didn't ask for it but all the people went to this park for knowing full well that it had gone wrong three times before so I didn't have much sympathy for the people involved but I did feel very strongly for the well-being of the dinosaurs which I also finally got to go and see Mad Max with my friends very loud and completely different to anything I've ever seen before a lot more explosions than I was expecting you know that it's really unbelievable that in the middle of this like apocalyptic world there would be so many cars and resources and things like that but you just accept it I came out of that film thinking this could have been called Furiosa Fury Road, right? And my last thing that I want to talk about is music. So Of Monsters and Men released their second album and I am loving it. I They're my probably my favourite band. And the other day Kirsty from Kirsty on Books messaged me on Twitter and was like, oh hey look they're doing a concert, do you want to go? And I was like, yes, <laughs> yes please. So. I'm so excited me and Kirsty are going to go and see Of Monsters and Men in November which is like 147 days away now. So excited, so excited. So we're going to be listening to their albums like non-stop from now until then. Please talk to me in the comments if I've mentioned anything that you've seen or read or interested in anything just leave a comment down below. Thanks so much for watching, like, comment, subscribe if you want to and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye!